Hello YouTube, welcome to the channel. If you get something out of the content that I put up here, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe and give me a like on these videos. It can make a real difference in the algorithms and how they share content with other channels. Also, if you're interested in some one-on-one -on -one Skype sessions, you'll find a good email on me in the description of every video I put up. lay them down we're going to cover this intro today that's from the benson project that i did with Kristen. you'll find a link to the actual song in the video description here today that you guys can check out that whole cut i hope you do to hear that in context um with the entire band but that's the intro stick around we're going to do the sticker challenge today i'll be looking for the name of the player and the name of the tune something that i'll throw on the end of this video the only way to get those is to win the sticker challenge anyway on to this intro for lay them down it's such a fun modern bluegrass mandolin intro to play music music this is in the key of b stuff at this tempo in b is just really fun to play it's a fun pocket to play in but it's also really fun to place the notes and stuff from this basic bluegrass mandolin into that pocket and try to anticipate phrases and feed off of the other instruments while you're playing. That's why I hope that you'll listen to that cut uh, just to kind of hear how all of that's working together with the placement of the notes on the bass and uh, the banjo roll and all those things that we can really key on. So right out of the gate, I'm going to talk about the pickup notes. You guys that watch the channel are going to be familiar with me making a really big deal out of this. We're, we're leading into the root note of B is where we're going to end up. Now, I've talked about before those pickup notes that we could play starting from this double stop, which consists of the fifth scale degree and the root note. And we get that nice double stop, punchy sound. The first thing that we play, and we and I, I really love that. This particular intro, I chose to play a busier single note line. To get down to that double stop, the band would start right there on that B note. So I feel like the pickup notes have ended at that point because the band's playing with us. And we got a couple of options there. That shape that I'm playing, if you're familiar with chord scales and that kind of thing, this shape would certainly remind you of an A flat half diminished. It would remind you of playing that particular arpeggio. But those notes, look how we have that angle. That diminished thing that happens on the mandolin. I'm starting on the fourth fret of the E string, four to two. Then I'm going to the fifth fret of the A string, and then playing right down the B scale, and then to the sixth fret of the D string. So we see that angle. Those intervals are actually happening now. that we would have we could play a B flat note and slide into the B or we could play an open A into that B note which will be a little spicier either one of those works good here's the slide again and then it's just laying right under your fingers and all of these Points of reference are, here's the B major scale. So we've already flirted with that minor third when we played that note. Now we do it again. 
you're going to see how much of a theme this is. There we have that minor third to major third slide. This time as a double stop. I'm also playing an F sharp note here, the fifth scale degree. One, two, three, four, five. I'm playing again to get a bigger sound instead of those single notes. That's a feel, that's a sensibility you really want to have playing modern bluegrass mandolin. You're going to see this same exact thing happen a number of times. Now, one of my favorite modern bluegrass things that I definitely picked this up from Herschel Sizemore, those double stops, you'll recognize that from a tune that he wrote called Rebecca. And I, I feel like all of us mandolin players borrow from that, or at least guys from my generation. The sticker challenge thing today features this in a really big way as well. But look what's so fun here. We're about to go to the F sharp chord. I'm just going to start on that B note that I'm already playing. Look what happens there. I'm going to this F sharp. If I were to arpeggiate that in first position, here's the foundation of this phrase. If we were playing rhythm, we would probably do that up here. Same notes. That's where we would chop for the solo. And here, coming from this position, even though my fingers never land in that particular muscle memory that we're so used to, I'm playing... From that B note, all I need is a half step down to the B flat. That's the third of the F sharp chord. And then I play up to the fifth. There's my fifth. One, three, five. Fifth scale degree. And then I'm playing a flat seven note instead of the root. That would work, but it's nice. To let that E note, it's a cool rub between those two notes. It's almost a little dissonant, but in a cool kind of way. And then another, again, embellishment line there. I think that's what I did on the record. So here we do have single notes, basically of that same line. It's minor third to major third, single note, then two single notes on the E string, still staying in that scale shape. So most of you are going to recognize that mandolin phrase. It would remind you of the pickup notes. Very similar language. And back to the roll. That time up to what we would think of as an E shape. And back to a B shape. Okay, this is the halfway point of the solo. So a lot of times we have an opportunity mentally for it to really feel like we're just playing a fresh series of pickup notes. And that's how I look at this next phrase. We're going to go up to the melody goes to the F sharp note. Typically that's what we would do on the front of a tune, like to work up to that higher F sharp note with a really solid bluegrass sound. This I chose to play instead of the F sharp here. I'm playing it up here on the ninth fret. That way, I can play this B note along with it and make that whole series of notes a double stop phrase. Using a slide. And then, not really one of those roll things, but just a... Almost just a rhythmic articulation to kind of sustain that double stop up here because it does feel different. I'm high enough, I'm in a different neighborhood of the fretboard up here. So my sensibility with my right hand needs to adjust to make that really sound like it fits everything else that I'm playing. 
Now, here we go again. Minor third to major third double stop, just like we used before. Then the slide down, minor third to the second scale degree. One B note, then we're into the four chord of E. On this, I chose to play a double note, an open E, and then the seventh fret on the A string that we've all done in fiddle tunes. That whole thing that we do all the time, kind of using that language. And then moving this interval in to take the place of that root note of E, move it up to the third scale degree of this chord, which would be an A flat note. So you see that double stop change while the tremolo is still being played. Now, my favorite phrase in the whole intro, we're going to a C-sharp minor. That's a two minor chord. My first thought would be to arpeggiate that here. If I just thought about outlining a C-sharp minor, if you're not keeping up with these arpeggios and stuff, you can check out my playlist on learning the fretboard and maybe a little some of this language you could come back and revisit things later. But that's how the channel works, is that we may have to do that from time to time. So anyway, what I'm doing to get to that C-sharp minor is a double stop phrase. Look, here's a, again, if you're not familiar, the a B double stop scale from here. Now that's really the, kind of the driving force in that phrase. The melody also steps down into that, so I'm doing it for that reason, but connection to the mandolin. Then my roll thing again when I get to this shape that is the C-sharp minor. There's my roll articulation again. Now the tag. Boom, one more time. Minor third to major third slide. And then minor third down to that second scale degree. Then an arpeggio. Keep it really solid on the outro of the solo. You could get by with so many different versions of that. And then one more hole to fill. And I played that same theme starting on a flat 7, starting on that flat 7, and then we see another minor 3rd that kind of got flirted with there. Okay, so we have the full tempo version on the front. Let me play through the entire intro now at a slow pace. So there we have it, my intro to lay them down. Like I said earlier, you'll find a link to this in the description of the video. So now for the sticker challenge, this is a classic bluegrass intro from back in the mid-90s. Um, just really classic stuff this whole band puts out. But let me see if I can get through this for you. <laughs> 